Electric cars depreciate a lot. For example, this is a Porsche Taycan, and if you had bought a Porsche Taycan Turbo S three or four years ago for about $210,000 and drove it less than the average American drives their car each year, say 10 or 15,000 miles a year, it would have depreciated over $100,000 in just about three years, which is a lot more than the average car depreciates. So why is this? Why do electric cars depreciate so much? Because it's not just crazy electric sports cars that this happens to. It's regular electric cars too. The Nissan Leaf starts at $28,000 and essentially loses half of its value in one year. Yes, all cars appreciate the second you drive them off the lot. Still, the level of depreciation is just not typical in the car industry. So today we're gonna figure out why electric cars depreciate so much. EVs on average lose 52% of their price tag in three years, while in comparison, their conventional ICE or internal combustion siblings lose 39.1% of their value in the same time frame. So why is this? Why are cars touted as the next big thing losing so much of their value? Well, it boils down to five main reasons, and we're gonna go through these reasons in order from least to greatest effect on the value of EVs. But before we get started, let's quickly define what depreciation is. Depreciation is the gradual reduction of the value of an asset over time. It comes from age, wear and tear, and other factors. Cars usually depreciate the most in the first three to five years of their lives, and then the depreciation curves kind of levels out after there. So let's get into it. The first major reason electric cars depreciate so quickly is that there are a lot of subsidies that reduce the price that people actually pay for an electric car. So while the Ford F-150 Lightning starts at $57,000, if you were to buy this base model one, you would get a $7,500 EV tax credit. So you wouldn't actually end up shelling out $57,000, you'd pay $49,500 excluding other fees because you didn't have to pay as much in taxes. Now, this EV tax credit does not apply to all electric vehicles. In most cases, there's a limit on the price of EVs that qualify. So for EV trucks and SUVs, the cap is $80,000, while the cap for sedans is $55,000. The EV tax credit would not have affected the Porsche Taycan depreciation we talked about earlier. For most electric vehicles that are sold in the United States, the $7,500 tax credit means that the depreciation on these cars really looks bigger because the real value you are depreciating from is the after-tax credit price and not the MSRP. The second major reason electric cars depreciate so quickly is that gas prices right now are relatively low, which reduces the financial incentive of an EV. EVs are expensive compared to their equally equipped internal combustion siblings, but the more expensive gas is, the more appealing electric vehicles become, and the more people are willing to pay for them. If gas prices are really low, that means people are less likely to pay as much for an electric vehicle because the savings are just not there. As of writing, the average price of gas in the United States is $3.44. This is 38% less than the $5 average price of gas we saw in 2022. When gas prices are high, it means that the relative cost savings of electricity are much higher. Pricing out how much it costs to charge an EV is really hard because it depends a lot on time, location, how fast the charger is, and a bunch of other factors. However, let's just assume it costs $15 to fully charge your EV. When gas prices are low, you'd save 20-ish dollars every time you fill up. But when they are high, that number could be $30 or $40 every time you fill up. With gas prices being relatively low, consumers are less inclined to buy an EV to try and save on gas costs. The third major reason electric cars appreciate so much is worries about reliability, battery longevity, and battery replacement. Now you're probably thinking, but Kobe, I thought electric cars were more reliable than internal combustion cars. They have fewer parts that could break because it's just a battery and a motor, right? And you're absolutely right. Electric cars don't have to have oil changes and there are fewer parts that can break. However, many potential buyers worry about the longevity of electric car batteries. To understand what I mean, take a look at my Apple Watch. I've had it for a couple of years, and if I look at the battery health tab, it says that the maximum capacity is 79%. That means that the battery has lost 20% of its ability to hold electricity. When it says it's 100% charged, that actually means it's 80% charged when compared to the first day I took it out of the box. Similarly, electric car batteries degrade as you charge them over and over and over again. And while it's not that big of a deal for my Apple Watch to be at 80% capacity, you feel the impact of a car's battery degrading much more. If you bought an EV new that had a range of say 300 miles, after a couple of years and some battery degradation at 80%, it would only have a range of about 240 miles. This is a big difference in the usability of your car. And the battery won't stop there. It will keep degrading until eventually it can't even hold a charge. Although a used electric car may be less likely to break than an ICE car, it is quantitatively worse as a vehicle than a new EV because of its lower range. And replacing a degraded battery is not cheap. 40% of the cost of an electric vehicle is just the battery. So if a Tesla Model 3, for example, starts at about $40,000, 
that means that just the battery alone costs $16,000. Potential price of a battery replacement pushes down the price of used EVs because even though there are still many years of life on these batteries when people are shopping around, they have the worry that they'll have to shell out tens of thousands of dollars on replacing a battery. So much like how a notoriously unreliable cars like Chrysler's lose their value faster than reliable cars like Toyota's because people fear the cost of upkeep, even if that specific car doesn't have a reliability problem, the reputation still hurts it and EVs struggle from a similar phenomenon. The fourth major reason electric cars depreciate so quickly is a simple function of supply and demand. When a person tries to sell a used electric car, they are selling it to an extremely saturated market. EV adoption in the United States has been rising, but not as fast as the production of electric vehicles. Only about 1% of the 280 million cars registered in the United States and 9.7% of new cars bought in the US are EVs. But despite Americans buying more and more electric cars each year, the supply of electric vehicles has outpaced the demand for them. Tesla's on its own has increased production by 500,000 units each year for the last three years. And brands like Ford, Chevy, BMW, Lucid, and Rivian are all producing more and more electric vehicles. In addition to the high supply of EVs from these companies, many of them are cutting prices to try and incentivize sales. But even with lower prices, trying to convince users to adopt a new technology is really hard and many consumers are just not ready to make the switch. Maybe they have range anxiety, don't have a garage they could charge their car in, want the sound of an internal combustion engine, or want to do long road trips regularly and don't want to have to sit around and wait for their car to charge. It's going to take a while for electric cars to reach the level that the majority of Americans will prefer them over their internal combustion siblings. There are way fewer people who are interested in buying your used electric car than the traditional internal combustion car. And when supply is high and demand is low, that usually means that the price is going to be pushed lower and lower. Now, if you're thinking, wouldn't the used cars win against the new ones because of how cheap they are? I thought the same thing except for reason number five. The fifth major reason why electric cars depreciate so quickly is that used EVs have a hard time appealing to consumers on the adoption curve. The majority of people buying new EVs are still early adopters. Early adopters want the cool new thing, and thus they're going to gravitate towards newer vehicles. Yes, the difference between a new EV and a used EV usually isn't that large because they get over their updates that give them new features as time passes. But newer EVs still have major advantages like better self-driving tech, faster charging, longer ranges, new design features, a new standardized charging port, or just a cool new product offering. If you bought a Ford Mustang Mach-E or F-150 Lightning when they first came out, there weren't many of them on the road, and people were going to ask you about it. But now it's just not the cool thing and people want to see a Cybertruck or a Rivian. Early adopters love feeling special, and they don't feel as special when they're driving around a car that they've seen 100 or 200 times before. They like having the cool new thing and people gawking at it. So we know that early adopters want to get cool cutting edge things, but when these early adopters turn around to try and sell their used EVs, the problem is that to the early majority, non-performance EVs are not a crazy attractive product offering. Because EVs batteries cost so much, automakers have to cut corners somewhere to get them to come in at the price point of internal combustion cars of similar sizes. And they usually do this by using more plastics and less leather, installing less sound deadening material which makes more road noise, and other little things that reduce the quality of the overall driving experience. So when you compare electric vehicles to other used cars, EVs oftentimes fall short against the competition unless you specifically want an electric car for the fantastic perks of environmental friendliness, gas savings, or the instant acceleration that EVs are so well known for. And because it falls short in many of these daily life attributes, people are just not willing to pay as much for them. So that's why EVs depreciate so much. It's a combination of the EV tax credit, low gas prices, battery concerns, supply and demand, and EVs position on the adoption curve. But I know you guys have some really interesting sources and analysis, and I'd love to hear them in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.